Podlingus is a podcast which discusses adult themes such as sex, sexuality, kinks and adult relationships. Everyone taking part is above the age of 21, so listener discretion is advised. Specific warnings about this episode may be found in the description to flick through at your own pleasure. Thank you for listening and enjoy our little exhibition. And welcome to Podolingus. Uh, we are once again recording with video. Maybe this time we'll actually use the video and things won't be messed up. Who knows? <laughs> we'll find out when I edit this and I get mad at past <laughs> me for being an idiot. Um, I believe in future Sparky. Oh my god. So much sending all my love to uh, future Sparky, future editing Sparky. You need it during these yep. trying times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, you're joining us today. Uh, with our favourite sexual sceptic, Kirsten. Hi, guys. <laughs> uh, we have the man who's simply described on Grinder as tall, Lewis. Good afternoon. And then you have your friendly neighbourhood, Hickey Fanatic. It's me. It's Sparky. How you doing? Yeah. Yes. So, uh, today's episode, we are looking at sex injuries. Uh, for no particular reason at all. <laughs> Definitely not because of um, Sparky's current um, neck attire, shall we say? Yes, uh, it's ever so slightly mauled. It doesn't look as a little bit. It doesn't look as bad as it has been. Um, <laughs> we got sent photos of it, like yeah. when it happened, and it genuinely looked like they were evidence in a, <laughs> an attack case, like an yeah. assault case. I mean, don't get me wrong. I've I've certainly had worse from my cats, <laughs> but the fact that it wasn't a, a creature with like deliberately sharp, deadly nails as yeah. cats do. You say that it was a drag queen, so I'm aware. But like they they made their nails like that. Cats they they, they just be chilling with their spikes on their feet. <laughs> they just be like that. Yeah. Uh, it was a. Wild, wild ride. I, most people who've seen my injuries, let's say, <laughs> thought that I actually went home with said drag queen. No, 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 no. That was just us making out in the club. And what? sweet, what? Jesus. Yeah, no, no, nothing. <laughs> what? No, no, nothing further happened. We were literally just pulling in the club. What? The I mean, like a, this person pulling, throwing, punching, <laughs> scratching. Uh, uh, what? There's. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. This person, my man. It was uh, the first time I've pulled someone in a club as well, so my single life is going great. Sparky's living. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Evidently. What is it you said? Uh, I'm single and deeply mingled. <laughs> <laughs> so... The, the best one-liners, most of them come from Lewis, to be honest. That is true, that is very true. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I would love to give you one just now, but I'm afraid I just can't quite get anything up yet. You, you need to be schmoozed before you can get it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I just need a bit more stimulation, really, before uh, things like that can arise. Exactly. You need, to, you need something yeah. to inspire you to arise to the occasion, you may say. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much pretty much r r hitting the nail right on the head. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, yes. with my uh, incident, as someone who likes stuff <laughs> happening on the neck and all that, um, part of me is like, hell yeah, this is amazing. However, I think it was very much so uh, drunken at the time. It seemed like a better idea than a uh, oh, later yeah. on the next day. I had to take, I took painkillers for like two days afterwards because I just, it hurt to talk, it hurt to do anything. Uh, the scratch. How? I've got one scratch on my back, which is healed looking like stitches. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. We can yeah, see we it. Yeah, we can. Yeah. I don't need to get out my binoculars <laughs> for that one. It genuinely looks like you've been attacked. Yeah. <laughs> when I showed it to my friend group back home, um, I was like, so I had an encounter with a drag queen. And uh, one friend went, what the fuck happened? And I went, well, they just got a bit excited. 
And their response is so beautiful of, get excited with what? Fucking boxcars. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, it's been a wild ride. Been a wild ride. Um, but I've been healing up. Uh, I did have a lot of questions about if it was consensual. Um, and I, I'm like, yes. Because I feel like I got a scratch or something. And of course, me being my hickey infused self was like, hey, hey, hey. Yes. yes, this is everything you, I'm into. Yeah, you don't mind a blemish or two. Yeah, and then <laughs> I barely made it out alive. You know. <laughs> so that happened on the Wednesday, and I had a date on the Friday. Oof. So. Ah. I had a dilemma. How did they take it? So what I did because I. There, there was no other way to address it. If I turned up to that date covered in whatever, they're yeah. obviously going to be like, oh, you're just doing whatever. So um, I messaged them the next day. When I messaged you guys showing you guys it off, mm-hmm. mm. I sent them the exact same. Apart from I made it more clear of like, I'm letting you know this because I don't want me to turn up and then whatnot. Uh, and yeah. they said they thanked me for not making it a surprise, <laughs> which is fair. Yeah, yeah. So and and th- that date went really well. So that's how I got additional hickeys on my shoulder. Uh- <laughs> of course you did. It's slightly better placed, may I yeah, say? Yeah, and a lot. This person has a better placement. Yeah, it's not. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm fine with having hickeys on my neck. It's just when they become scratches and I've got them in my hairline and yeah. That's not wild. Fun. Yeah. So I've had a very hickey heavy week. Yeah. <laughs> Living up to my name. Absolutely. And that that is the ins- that is the inspiration for this episode. Exactly. Is us going to talk about kink related injuries. Yes, precisely, precisely that. And again, I have gone into great detail about the um the academic research that I have partaken in before this episode <laughs> because y'all y'all didn't didn't see the hear the last one that I went in deep and hard with academic research but you gave it your you know? all on that research and in the third episode <laughs> rude enough not died. to come out the third episode stayed yep. in the closet like a little baby bitch Damn right. <laughs> Disappointing. <laughs> I can start with my facts if you would like. Yeah, I mean, we've already had my tale of... <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yes, so... In 2015, there was a study done by the Customer or Consumer Product Safety Commission. Uh-huh. That they, they had talked about how injuries since 2007 have doubled within the the sex space <laughs> and on on a graph like plotted on a graph um the increase mostly happened during 2012 and 2013 when that ungodly 50 shades of gray happened oh <laughs> Pop culture. Ah. Pop culture is the curse. Mm, Love it. And the overwhelming majority of these injuries, can you guess what was the, at 83% of injuries, Mm. what is, what's the top category of injury? Is it people pulling out anal beads like they're trying to start a lawnmower <laughs> you're in the right area of the body it's not pulling out people people using like one of those t-shirt cannons to fire them in <laughs> like honestly i would love that but it is it is basically that it is foreign body removal <laughs> ah so people Sticking things up there that they should not be sticking up there. <laughs> yes, I'll always use a flared base. <laughs> or an exactly. object with a flared base, rather. Yeah, 
As in, I have heard the, if it doesn't have a flare, don't put it up there. What is a flare? I do not know. I generally do not know. It just, so that it goes it, out. Okay. Yeah. Basically, you want one end, end where it, it gets very wide so that that end is impassable. Okay. Um. See, um yeah, yeah, go. <laughs> I, and this co- comes nicely on to my story of... of oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been given permission to tell the story. Um, so I, when one of my partners was it getting into like anal play, mm-hmm. we, because we'd only started, did not have anything that was particularly suitable. Mm-hmm. But we went with it anyway, because you'd be horny, you know? Um, so I have, like, a small sort of bullet vibrator. Uh-huh. <laughs> and oh. I... I, 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 I like, can, <laughs> yes? Do, can I just ask? Yes. With this bullet vibrator, mm-hmm. did you much like the turrets in total <laughs> how they, they, they fire more bullet per bullet <laughs> did you just put the whole thing just Floop. Like, right, no. right up this is the thing is actually we were we knew that it wasn't it's not a good thing to do so there's like a there's like an edge bit where you can stick your like your nail in it for like pulling it out and I made sure to hold on to that bit for a while for a while and yeah <laughs> this is when the issues started happening mm. right mm-hmm. so as as movement and things were happening things were moving and shaking you know as uh, they tend to as you know to. it went further and further in <laughs> until we were like still mid scene right and i looked down and He's like, can you take it out now? Because it's, it's, the lube had worn off and it was starting to hurt. And I looked out and there was nothing there. <laughs> Which immediately stopped all fornication. <laughs> uh, as <laughs> as he, he looks me dead in the eyes and goes, help me. <laughs> oh, <dear. laughs> Oh, where, that where? Poor, poor boy. Yeah, it was so bad. So he um, spent, I think, he went to the bathroom. This was also in a shared flat, by the way. So he had to get dressed to go to the bathroom and just birth a vibrator <laughs> on the toilet. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't think it's called birthing when it's up that side. I, th- I I believe um, I've the, read the, enough the more M-Preg scientific to know. term would be he shat out a vibrator. <laughs> yep, that's the scientific so, term, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. Yes. So yeah, I'm. Um, there was there was a. I'd almost have to go to the to ER, but amazingly, didn't. He was able to poop it out. Yes. <laughs> and goodness. I am very, very proud of him. <laughs> In all honesty, I did think that you were going to say that you looked down when he asked you to take it out and you just seen it sort of disappearing. <laughs> like someone sort of like swallowing a grape. Like, you know? So they hold it in there and then they just... <laughs> oh, we've killed Kirsten. Oh, dear. There we go. I mean, well, I mean... That's what you get for not using a flared bee. <laughs> You're right. He was probably crying too. <laughs> um. <coughs> oh, wowzers. There we go. <clears throat> you know, I, I've returned back to the world. I, I do I do feel for uh, that partner of yours. So I've had to do the situations of literally the the birthing aspect of it because there'll be something <laughs> lodged not not in my not in my ass but in uh yeah in another region the vagine the vagine 
I believe that's the scientific term. There's just one time that always sticks in my mind, uh, and that was mm-hmm. I was having sex with someone and uh, the condom broke. So, oh, no. Yeah, and we found out afterwards, which, well, I do find this uh. quite funny, because what happened was, like, he finished and he was like, fuck, <clears throat> fuck, that was good, and then pulled out and went, fuck! <laughs> but it was just, oh, just God. I, it was the two different flavours of fuck okay. that we got there. So uh, then, <clears throat> oh, oh yeah. Then I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. And I basically pushed out. <laughs> The jizz. You, you, you just gotta poo the cum out. I just... <laughs> Another good one-liner from Lewis. <laughs> just gotta poop the cum out. I stole it in all honesty. Ah. Uh, from a gif. It was a sexy lady dancing with the glittery words poo the cum out in the background. <laughs> well, I, oh, I didn't man. quite do that. I just had to push it out and then... Uh, yeah, I, this next day I still got the morning after pill just to be on the safe side because... Yeah, I refuse to sense. believe that my body yeah. was able to just get rid of everything. <laughs> just best to be on the safe side. Oh yeah, I've also done some research too on like some of the most common uh, sex mm. injuries and stuff. And, uh huh. And the one of the ones that I got that came up multiple times was foreign objects stuck inside. Yep, it's a normal thing, guys. Yeah, I- idiocy is. Is a real. very natural and widespread <laughs> phenomenon. Here, here, yeah, right. I love being an idiot. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, oh, Same. Yeah. The two, my best hobby. two most common foreign objects that uh, gynecologists have encountered, and yes, they're actually referred to as foreign objects as well, uh, is yeah. tampon tampons because someone's forgotten right. one's in there, uh, and oh no, oh, so they just double stack. It. Yeah. <laughs> The old period whopper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the, oh, the, uh, the second most common is lost condoms. And that is, if you don't know, when you're having sex with someone and the condom slips off and it's still inside. That's, ah. that's very cursed. I've not had that, but I have had someone who... I, I've met someone who has had that experience and... Um, well, their their story was basically they were with a guy, and uh-huh. they were doing sex as the kids do. You doing the sex? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then when he pulled out, basically a condom wasn't there. Uh, she was on the pill and everything anyway, so she wasn't too worried. Um, yeah, I would be a bit worried about STDs and stuff. But he basically pulled out and the condom wasn't there, and he's like, "Oh, uh, it must have fallen off." or something and so they like searched around her bed and she was like yo can you just check it's not inside so he even went down yeah. and checked and he's like no no it's not there it's not there i don't see anything and she's like okay cool well th- he, he went down like mr bean <laughs> checking for his watch on christmas turkey <laughs> just with like the wee torch sort of having a wee look around inside so why, why, why not just use like a couple fingers you know Go for it! Like you, you've already been like, inside. You exactly. Might as well. and I mean, if it is there, you might as well be trying to fish it out. The, and you've probably touched your cum mo- more times than enough to be able to finger the cum. You know what I mean? Finger yeah. the cum. Yeah. But uh, he was, to my knowledge, just had a little look like whoop. Uh, didn't see it. <laughs> just opened it up. <laughs> just pulled back the curtains. Open for business. Yeah. Had a little look and he didn't see anything. But again, at this point, they didn't know it was stuck inside. I feel like if they both yeah. knew it, then there might be a bit more enthusiasm to find it. Uh, they yep. just assumed yeah. it had fallen off and like fallen down the side of the bed or something. You yeah. know, because there is a lot of movement. So There's a lot of sh- moving and shaking. Yeah, and uh, it was when she went for a shower. She was just obviously cleaning herself as you do. And she's like... yeah. I'm just going to check one more time. Now she's in the shower and can get like a proper in-depth. Yeah, she yeah. had to get the dental mirror yeah. out. <laughs> <laughs> Lo and behold, after about... It was up there for like a good few hours. Yeah. She pulls out a condom and is like... <laughs> I cannot imagine a worse thing to pull out of your vagina than... 
a, a plastic used... pocket of someone I, else's jizz. I feel like there could be many worse things that you could pull out of your vagina. But I feel like okay, as long as it's something you've produced, I would feel more comfortable with. But like this is literally a little plastic baggie of someone else's children. You know, like <clears throat> yeah. I don't want to be pulling that out. That's what fair do enough. you yeah. think? What do you think would be worse in a vagina, Lewis? Um, I don't know, like a, a manky apple core or something. Oh God, your your body just made its own it apple cider, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, um, like I, I don't know, it might have been a very hot day, you sat down and you were naked, you, you, you've not cleaned up in a wee while, you, 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 you realise that you sat on something, but when you go to check, it's already, bloop, you know, a bit like the bullet, it's just been slurped up. Exactly, you know. Uh, with the yeah. going back to the foreign objects, the so that's the two most yes. common with women. With mm, uh-huh. uh, not even so much men. This is just said with rectums. Uh, there isn't yeah. a most common. Uh, however, this guy that they uh, talk to, Doctor Joshua D. Zuckerman. So Hell you yeah. know he's he's the the Zuckerman. Uh, Hell yeah. He is a plastic surgeon. Uh, well, Joshua D. Zuckerman, MD, is a plastic surgeon in New York. Uh, uh-huh. And he said that he's had some unique things he's had to remove. In one case, we had to surgically remove a pink softball from someone's rectum. And in another case, <laughs> and I love this quote, a significantly sized potato. <laughs> love that. <laughs> that is. Mm. I think. Th- I think that was probably an apple core situation. <laughs> they just sat on it and it, it just. just whoop. Um, like yeah. I, I'm Northern Irish and I'm. I love <laughs> potatoes, but not this much. <laughs> like, don't put I feel like, up I, 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 Obviously, <laughs> fruit vegetable tuber argument aside, <laughs> a potato is probably one of the worst edible plants. To put, I mean, it's it's certainly not the worst, and there's probably no, pineapple. a lot more worse. But I, I wouldn't exactly put it particularly mm. high up on the inserting list. I mean, to be honest, personally, I feel like I would rather go for a pineapple before a potato, <laughs> Ooh, solely because I feel like that would have a better entertainment value. <laughs> Potatoes are too boring. And, and it, a... it would, it would, I suppose, a little bit like a bad dragon dildo. It, there would be an interesting texture to it. Yeah. Whereas a potato, it, it's just sort of no flour uh, base. Yeah. Do you want to? It, it's a, you know, it's a potato. It's, it's, it's the same as in cooking. Potatoes are potatoes. If you want it to really stand out, you got to add something else to it. You know. You know? If you Lube. could explain to the viewers at home what you just casually mentioned with the dragon scale dildos. Oh yes, Bad Dragon, for anybody that doesn't know, um, is a sex toy company that more or less specifically designs sex toys that are shaped like uh, dragons, wolves, sort of stuff. Basically sort of a uh, Fantasy. Creature dildos yeah um they're they, they they have quite a large selection of stuff i'm sure in weatherspoons well uh, drunk and with some friends i perused through the website to see all the things they had mm-hmm. um i was, one of I was very tempted to get a uh, it was i think it was like a little five pack of miniatures uh of the bad dragon dildos yeah, and you could just sort of, like pop them up on your desk it'd be quite cute <laughs> but um yeah for for some people uh, they're quite interested in that sort of thing either for the um i suppose the theoretical this feels like something else therefore i can imagine that it is something else uh, yeah inside or around me because there are masturbatory toys as well mm-hmm. i.e dragons and dogs well wolves mouths that okay you can put your dick into um Bizarre. it would work for like um, people who are like alpha, beta, omega. I forgot what the actual term is, but furries. Furries. Well, like not exactly yes, furries, but, it, but, but it's the, like the, sexual the ones that furries. are more into animally sex yeah. furries. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, that's fair. That's fair. I, fe- I really, I really do feel like just for the sake of having to explain that sort of thing, furries should get together. <laughs> Well, maybe not actually. <laughs> uh, they, they they should have a meeting to discuss what terms to use for the more safe for work furry community and the less safe for work furry community. I mean, there might be, there might be that already, and we're just ignorant to it. That well, might I, be a thing. I'm aware that there's fur suits and mer suits. And fur suits are like the expensive ones, and mer suits are the ones that. The, 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 yeah, they like to get fucked in and stuff like that, so they're fine okay. getting it luby and stuff like that. Okay. Apparently. Fair. Well, even that, I... We learned something today. Yeah, even that I didn't know. But I don't think calling them Murrays... Murrays. Be... <laughs> my first, That's... my first child shall be Murray. Now, <laughs> uh, for foreign objects, uh, just very quickly, because I've also researched uh, the, well, I say research, I just got from one website, basically, the fix mm. if you find yourself in a situation, which I feel is very important. Um, that is important. So, do, do, do. first of all, says there's absolutely no shame in doing that because, you know, it's fine. Uh, it recommends that you stay clear of things, for example, softballs and potatoes, uh, purposely <laughs> yep. putting stuff whoop, uh, just because it could cause infection. Uh, and it would, it highly recommends that if you are going to do something like that, uh, to avoid stuff getting stuck, remember to use plenty of loop. Uh, of course. And it's highly recommended that you opt for toys, uh, something that is designed for that. Sp- and if you're going for the rectum, you go for specifically anus-friendly ones. Um, but yeah, so it's basically saying if you're going to put stuff up there, probably go for toys. It's going to be better. It's going to be safer. Uh, and yeah, safer to retrieve and lubricant for safer to insert. Yeah. It's basically... Go, go for something silicon related. Yeah. Probably. With a flirt base. But certain people are idiots. Uh, <laughs> and um, I feel like that should be... Um, yeah. Highlighted. While, whilst anything can be a dildo if you're brave enough. Yeah. It also means that you have to be stupid enough. Yes. For some of the things to be used as a dildo. Yeah, uh, they also say yeah. that if this happens, uh, like, you do get something stuck, the best thing to do is, first of all, relax. Because you'll need to make sure everything gets back to its non-aroused size. Uh, and then yep. you can either try putting a couple of fingers up to get it yourself. Uh, you can either try bearing down, which I did and uh, one of your partners had to. Um, yep. Or uh, if you get to a case where you just can't get it, go to a doctor go to the ER just yeah. sooner the better because you could get infections if something's stuck basically yeah. that is the, the uh, fix for that ah. and I have related to kind of that sort of thing mm-hmm. there was a there was a study done in, last year actually Ooh. don't know how anyone did a study in the year of our lord 2021 but there you go Um, So there was an academic paper that asked almost um, 1,400 people who participate in kink to talk about their, um, the rate of injury that they got around kink and their kind of, do they disclose it to healthcare professionals, etc. The injuries within kink were not super common but not uncommon there was about 13 percent of people 13 and a half percent of people that had been injured within kink Mm -hmm. so obviously that the term injured is different for everyone so that's maybe a little bit of an issue but um and then though they then further on asked those 13 um, percent did they delay treatment because it was related to yeah, kink related injury mm. and t- almost 20 percent said yes i delayed going to get treatment for this because i didn't want to explain what it was yeah which i think is kind uh, of wild <laughs> yeah i mean I, I can obviously understand not wanting to uh go and speak to lovely old Linda who's sort of three years away from retirement uh, about the dildo that you want her to fish out of your anus (laughs) but I yeah 
I I feel like it it's it is one of those things where it it could also be a delay of I could probably just get this out myself, mm. whereas they yeah. could in theory go to the doctors at that point. But I suppose some people are just a bit stubborn because they don't want to have to risk that, <laughs> so they're they're just going to keep trying themselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm someone who's been to the hospital a couple of times due to sex related injuries. Um, <clears throat> How is I that? I say hospital sometimes just the doctor. Uh, my, my. There's a few. Um, well, I'll say first of all, on my list of like most common, it brings up UTIs, so urinal tract infections. Are we counting that as an injury? Um, or are we on- only if you got one from a very specific act? I feel like just general UTIs oh, yeah. no, are I mean, def- kind of boring, but like if if you were to I don't know have a load of milk poured into you and have it all duct taped up, <laughs> and because of that you got a UTI, you know. Then that I would count that as an injury. <laughs> the sparky look directly at the camera into Lewis's eyes is a, a beautiful image that hopefully you will get to see this week. But Jesus Christ, that was such a visceral image. I I would like to make clear I have not duct taped <laughs> milk inside of anybody, nor have I previously ever thought about it. This is just the strange concoction of a random Randy. thought. I think possibly it might have something to do with the um, the Dan and Phil milk fic. That that was a thing a long time ago. Oh, don't. Okay, we're going to talk about fan fiction at some point because Jesus Christ. Yeah, I feel like the, the, the milk fic should be left for another day. So so should the hat fic, but that's a whole separate other thing. And the cheese fic. <laughs> and the cake fic. There, there's so many fan fictions that are just so messed love... up. And we're going to talk about a fan... We're going to have a fan fiction episode. Because but today Spark... is not that day. Today is not that day. Put we... a pin in it, guys. Yeah, yeah. And Sparky looks like they're absolutely about to die. I, I just... A lot of words were said, and none of them I felt were sexy. <laughs> oh, you're correct. <laughs> yeah. I have read all of these things, mm-hmm. and my brain is um, not okay with it. No, it's been many a year, and I still remember them. Yeah, I it was it it must have been sort of like third or fourth year in high school, so yeah. probably like at least. Ten years ago, by though, like, five yeah. to ten years ago now, yeah. Um, that it, it it was just sort of like in in your friend <laughs> groups, especially if a couple of them were kind of like Dan and Phil. Yeah, one of them would eventually come across it, and because <laughs> they they had to suffer it, everyone else has to suffer it. I have a fun story about this. That's... My God. Yeah, I have a fun story about this that I will see you oh. for that episode of the podcast. Oh, I'll call in because sick. I, you're gonna, that's fine. When Sparky doesn't show up, that's when we'll do the fan fiction episode. When Sparky doesn't show up, so, no one will know what they're doing. <laughs> like, yeah, no, that's also got very there. true. We got there. We, we got, got there. there. So Sparky, other than UTIs then, sexual injuries. Uh, I have been doggy styled into a wall and ended up with a minor concussion oh babe <laughs> as one does as one does as one does so yeah i had to go to the doctors for that i was just like oh i hit my head uh it's also how i know the major difference between a minor concuss- concussion and a minor traumatic brain injury uh because lovely wonderful because i did get one of those but that's another story for another time and not sex related i'll figure out how to discuss that at some point <laughs> uh, just injuries in just general it, how yeah, we're all broken yeah. people if we just had an episode about injuries just generic injuries i would be here all day um <laughs> you're right so yeah i got i got doggy styled into a wall that was sore nice um I did get a very specific UTI through uh, sexy stuff, but I have UTI stuff written here, so I might save it for that. The one that I should have gone to the doctors for, but I didn't, uh, was my nerve damage, which I'm pretty sure you both know about now. 
So I didn't go to the doctors this one. I probably should have. I avoided it because I didn't know what to say to them. Uh, I was going to... I had a whole plan of what I was going to say. I was going to say, oh, my, I put on my wristwatch too tight. But uh, yep. thankfully it didn't come like to that. Like one does. Hmm. So, uh, basically I had my hands here, nice and straight. Oh, I've got a black spot. Don't mind me. I'm just marked for dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's my eyeshadow, don't worry. <laughs> so I had my hands here and uh, restrained and I had them like that with handcuffs over yeah. them. And when you're having sex, you can get a bit squirmy. So hands behind my back, getting a bit squirmy. And I feel yeah. my left hand kind of gets a bit sore. But I don't really say anything because one, I can take a beating. And two, mm-hmm. I-, I was having a good time anyway. It was when oh, yeah. it didn't feel majorly bad. Yeah, yeah, it felt it felt yeah. fine. It was just a bit sore, a bit achy. Yeah, and, yeah, I, I mean, you you were you were on top of your hands, so I can imagine that you were already sort of used to them. Yeah. Being, oh, that that's a bit uncomfortable. Oh, that's a different position. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. It was when my entire hand went numb, and I Oof. started having like pinprick sensation through it all, and it was really hmm. sore. I don't know, have you ever had something that was like numb and agonizing at the same time? Like, the agony was in it, but when I when touched you hit your it. Elbow? Yeah. Oh. When I touched it, I couldn't feel it. So then I'm just like, yo, safe word, time out. So yeah. I do that, I flip around, and because uh, obviously my hand had been kind of like in a fist position. And I'm really hoping we get the camera stuff working for this because it's way better visually. Uh, but if not, I expect y'all both to help with descriptions here. So. Basically, yep. my hand was in a fist and my thumb was stuck on the inside. And no matter what I did, if I moved it, it would ping back. What well, I would ping back. Um, and we were like, whoa, sexual activities ceased. We uh, immediately went to Dr. Google to do some research to see if this is something that can happen nerve wise. Uh, I yes. also hit up a couple of friends who are studying medicine and doctory stuff, and I'm like, what happened? Please help. Uh, I also yeah. I also help uh, my sister, bless her soul, <laughs> because she also oh my God. she studies like medicine-y, doctory stuff. Uh, I mean, she's a uh, she does pharmaceutical stuff, but she studied quite a lot of biology, obviously, to get there. So I was like, yeah, makes sense. Help. Um, and basically, what I got back from all of them and the internet was, you've managed to fuck up a nerve in your wrist. Because there's like nerves in your um, wrist uh, on your thumb side that if you hit yeah. it too much a certain way you can damage it and it'll make one of your fingers, most likely your thumb, kind of get trapped. Now, yeah, uh, my thumb was stuck curved in for about two weeks, which is very interesting. Oh my god. Being a compel. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't my right hand. Because computer artists getting that degree, I wouldn't have been able to hold my graphics tablet then. <laughs> it was my yep. left hand, so it, it was just awkward to hit the buttons on the side of my tablet. Uh, and mm. it, it healed up by the third week it was getting there, but it could, could still curl in sometimes. Uh, but now all my fingers and digits are functioning. But the only way I can really notice it now is when you do the thing of you stretch out your hand and you relax it, how your fingers just go back to where they should be. If I do that with both yeah. my hands, stretch them out, and then I relax them, your, my left, your, like, thumb left thumb like curls, curls in. in. Your, your, your thumb just wants to go back to it bed. It wants to go back to bed, exactly. So, yeah, I'm glad I, I have my eyeshadow all over my hand when demonstrating this. <laughs> it just means you have the black spot. I have the black spot, Fine. I'm next. So, uh, yeah, I probably should have gone to the doctors with that, but I didn't. Uh, thankfully, I say no permanent damage, but no permanent life-changing like, damage yeah, yeah no 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 damage damage just a little bit of slightly bendy thumb but yeah i have so because i also looked up like most common injuries in kink bdsm and a lot of them were related to that type of thing so there was like rope constriction so obviously the rope ropes get tighter and when you're moving around and when you're playing so the idea of like if you're you're sitting in a chest harness kind of idea, um, that getting tighter and tighter can cause you breathing difficulties or blackouts or like a loss of feeling in limbs. 
Hello. Um, you know, and certain like other ones related to that kind of thing. So one of them was strangulation. Yeah. If, yeah. Like if you have rope around your neck um, yeah. or collars are too tight, that mm. kind of thing can cause you having breathing issues. But I know for a fact you have the, you guys have probably heard of this, but the, the two finger collar thing. If your collar is the right size, if you could put two fingers in it comfortably. Yeah. Because mm, mm-hmm. it just gives you that extra little bit of movement yeah. uh, if it needs to. Especially if you're wearing like a proper like leather collar, which leather doesn't yeah. really want to stretch that much. What you were saying, you, what you were saying about <clears throat> like uh, with rope injuries and all that, that kind of reminds me, because I'm guessing like rope burn would also be up there then. Yeah. Yeah. Because a vast, like, if you're, again, like, tying, let's say, your wrists too tight, like, together, uh, that moving back and forth can give you massive, like, rashes and burns. Yeah. Which is not not a good thing. <laughs> and that's, not a that's vibe. the reason why, like, not a vibe that you want to, like, because, and imagine walking around in everyday life after you've had a scene the night before and having, like, rope lacerations across your wrists and then people going, what the fuck did you do? Well, you see there- I got kidnapped. You see there is a drag queen, um... (laughs) (laughs) See, again, on most common, but not, like- kinky injuries uh yeah one that made me go huh i didn't think of that is actually carpet burn carpet burn is one of the most common um and that's basically just if you're having sex on the carpet It, it, it took me back mainly because i once was having a rather fun sexy time uh on on the carpet but we I, I'm always very concerned about the cleanup afterwards. So I was like, we're, Fair. we are putting down a towel. There will be no stains on this floor. <laughs> yes. Um, I basically prevented any carpet burn by accident. Just because I didn't want to make a mess. I'm proud of yeah. you. Um, but yeah, that's one of the most common ones. That's within the top three most common non-kinky right. sex injuries. Is carpet burn. Uh-huh. Uh, and... Basically, if you do end up with it, is you treat it how you treat any carpet burn, which is just like cool it down, uh, use antiseptic soap and all that jazz. Um, yeah, and don't use ice. I'm guessing. Yeah, don't use ice. Just keep it cool, and if there's any cuts or irritations, like just get antiseptic stuff on it. Just use your brain. Be smart. Treat it like you would a regular carpet burn. And the best prevention is just to throw down something on the ground. Whether it's like blankets, towels, yeah. whatever. Gravel. <laughs> Gravel. <laughs> if you're if you're wanting it to be an in hell of an uncomfortable time, <laughs> gravel. Yeah. If you hate yourself. If your sub's been naughty. <laughs> gravel them. I mean if the, if your sub's been naughty, just make them kneel on some gravel or dried peas or something, you know. No, like, just get the Lego out. Yeah. That's when you just go Phew, Lego. There you go. <laughs> You've got Legoed. <laughs> that that that's just sick. <laughs> I know, isn't it? Sorry, is this is something I forgot See? to mention. Uh, with the drag queen uh-huh. who did this to my neck, had the fucking gall to say, "Oh, I'm a bottom." I'm like, "You're a bomb. You're a bo- I'm a fucking virgin what? if you're a bomb." Like. <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus oh, Christ! I, I'm j- I'm just trying to consider the very aggressive <laughs> bottom. Another one of the most common injuries in kink and BDSM um, is like miscalculating um, when you're dealing out punishment or hitting someone. Because if like a person you're playing with has a, an injury mm. and that you don't know about or that you have forgotten about or what, or you're just like slipped and you hit too hard, oof, yeah, that could be that could be a long time pain. Yeah, there's always so I, I've, I've heard the horror <laughs> stories of people who have uh, accidentally been like whipped in the face, like that oh. that because uh, if it's not intended. That can be a real... Uh, 
sting and whips sting like fuck. Yeah, and if you get that accidentally, like, in your eye, by accident, like, it's not intended at all, <gasps> no preparation for that, mm-mm. No. No, that sounds awful. Always practice safe sex. Full PPE is always suggested. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna get, like, mask, glasses, like... Hard um, hat for the concussions. Hard hat, um, a lab coat because you're into it. It's not for <laughs> knee, PPA knee, purposes. Knee and elbow pads for the friction burns. <laughs> there we go. Always practice safe Gloves sex. Gloves that go at least down sort of past your wrists. And make yeah, sure all your toys you know? have a flare. And so Only all, all toys should be flared and attached to another surface, I feel. Like, e e either, like, pens at the bank on a chain <laughs> or just directly attached to, like, a bench A or mirror. Something. Like, in, a, in the children's section of a museum where there's, like, things for them to play with, but they don't want them to steal. They're, like, at, they're properly bolted down. You, know. you want so so a uh, uh, um, sub playing area would just look like a children's play area. It's what you're saying. A sub play area. Yeah, yeah. I, but instead of sort of like the normal handholds for like a climbing wall, it's just a bunch of dildos. So it's just a bunch of in the sub yeah. play area. Do you have your soft play yeah. and your hard play? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, obviously. Absolutely. What soft play is like a mommy dom. <laughs> I, I, I feel like it's 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 up to whoever makes it. I feel like it, this this is an idea that really needs to to take off because like Honestly? obviously there's sex dungeons and stuff like that, and that's a bit of a joke. But yeah, why 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 not just make it a more common thing to just have a a sex room where you just with all your stuff in it, where so you that, just yeah. drop off your subs. And then you just go, t yeah. you go to work for the day, and your subs just there having a jolly good time, meeting other subs. You you can just, just hang them up on the wall, <laughs> you know. Put them on, put them on a butt plug that you seem suitable, and leave. You know. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, I'm imagining this like uh, that episode of Rick and Morty where they have the oh, what's his name? The the Jerry the Jerry um, daycare. And yeah. It's just like all these different Jerry's and sub, all these different subs just talking to each other. Just can yes. we now when yeah. we say subs, can we just say Jerry's? <laughs> Can we just yeah all these different Jerry's? Subs are now Jerry's only. Yeah. Jerry's. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> but so this... you're top of a Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> well, my Jerry. Um, <laughs> this related to what I was saying for my 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 dear my dear Jerry does not bruise. Does oh. not. And it is infuriating, Aww. right? Variant impact play. And I am a five foot four individual who has very little strength. I am small strength boy. <laughs> so I go full whack, right? Like not instantly, obviously. Yeah. But like I am try. If I, if he's like, oh, try and bruise me. And I'm actively trying. And he does not bruise. And it like I hate to wish for someone to bruise or whatever, but I wish there was some payoff for my work. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't. I give and I give. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. I th I th maybe you just need to try different tools. Like just go for a key in next time. You yeah. Know? Just, I, I, I don't know, go to, like, the gardening section at Asda's and just get a trowel. See if that works. <laughs> just next time you're... A metal trowel. Yeah, just whack him with next it. Next time you're going down, just come in and go, Curse him with a metal chair! You know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's what you need to do. Just... Yes. Just I've have a chair at all that. times. Yeah, you... Just when it... If ever they bring up the, the subject of them being marked... Do not hesitate. Pick up the chair immediately and smash it over them. No hesitation. With these wooden chairs. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Just no hesitation. Just as soon as they mention anything about bruises, just pick up and smash. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. That fixes my problem. And then you can have the discussion of with uh, they're too embarrassed to go to the hospital or not. Oh, exactly. Then yeah. you can have that discussion oh. when need be. <laughs>
Exactly. Uh, yeah, I I don't have anything on my list really about uh, instant impact other than just saying, yeah, it's quite common to pull a muscle during sex. Oh, speaking of pain, my wisdom tooth is causing me a bother. Oh my god. Would you like to know the average breakdown of age and gender of um, people going to the hospital after injury? Absolutely, yes. It is 44 years old for men. Mm -hmm. And 30 years old if you're female. Yeah. That, that doesn't surprise me, in all honesty. Really? Uh, that, 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 that sort of seems somewhat reasonable. I mean, because I was expecting that, on average, it would be people who are older who will be more likely to go into hospitals uh, for sex-related injuries. A, because They're... potentially if they are older, they might just be a bit more breakable, a little bit less physically That's fit. Fair. And a bit wiser. Uh, sort of stuff. So with these things as well, <laughs> it's because they are wiser, uh, as Sparky said, they'll be more likely to be like, oops, well, better go to the doctor. As... Because I think by that point, they're already used to just going to the doctor about stuff. Whereas yeah. we're still young, we're still trying to avoid... We don't want to tell them. We, yeah, we, we're just trying to avoid calling the doctors to arrange an appointment to begin with, you know. Anxiety. Um, <laughs> yeah, so they, 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 they've had a few years to get over their anxiety. And I can imagine that for men it would also be older. Because on the whole, men have always been worse at going to the doctors about things. Yeah. Just throughout history, for some reason, because we're idiots. <laughs> um, I, I, I once had a sexual injury where, uh, for somebody on Snapchat, I, I was filming a little video uh, about putting a, 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 a dildo up my bum bum. Uh, uh -huh. It had a flared base. I'm um, proud of you. Better than me. <laughs> however, as 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 it was, uh, you know, as, as it was getting jostled around in there. Um, uh huh. I, I was suddenly like, huh, this doesn't feel that comfortable. Huh? And obviously it doesn't necessarily feel particularly comfortable before that, but I was just like, you know what? I can't be bothered with this anymore. I'm just going to stop. Fair. Um, everything seemed reasonably fine at that point in time. Uh -huh. um, however, the the next day, obviously, I'd, I'd been feeling just a bit sort of uncomfortable so, in general, yeah. but as someone that also has IBS and also as someone who'd just had something up their arse, that wasn't really particularly surprising. That mm. that that's just sort of well it's duh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just like that that was one hundred percent expected. But the next day when I was at work I I just was not feeling great. Uh-huh. And I, I was I was needing to, to go for a poop. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, let's go for a poop, as one does. Went through to the bathroom, got my phone out, pulled up. I, th I think it was Duolingo at the time. <laughs> I was learning German. Um, nice! The bird! And I went for the that initial bit of thrust to sort of get things moving, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, Cause a that after thing. The, after, after the initial uh, bit of thrust, things sort of take over themselves. Gravity helps out at that point, you mm, know. Exactly. Um, however, with that initial uh, push on the accelerator, it did not feel mm. comfortable at all. Right. It, 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 it hurt to push. So Ooh. I was like, huh. And in my head, I was sort of put, putting all these pieces together. And I was like, yeah, I've probably injured my bowel. Yeah. That's Oof. fun. However, I still need to push. So I tried pushing again. Oh. Which was very painful. Right. Yeah. I, I also let out a, a very <laughs> wet fart. <laughs> now, uh -huh. the, 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 the reason why I point that out was just because it was quite amusing in all honesty. Um, obviously, <laughs> my, 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 my bowel was trying to sort of soothe itself and producing a bit of excess mucus. Uh, as one's bowels tend to do when that sort of thing happens. Yep, exactly. Um, and because this little bathroom stall was just sort of... It was obviously installed into that room in, like, the 70s or the 80s. It was a very echoey <laughs> cubicle room. 
So it, uh-huh. <laughs> I honestly wish to God that I still had the recording because it it was like top quality. It sort of will Wilhelm scream. <laughs> this would be like a fart that you hear in everything. Sort of it was a Hell comical, yeah. beautiful fart. Beast. <laughs> yeah. But that was obviously another sign that things weren't going quite so well down there for me. Yep. Yeah. So for the next sort of half an hour, to in order to poop, as I was still trying to do, I couldn't use my normal pushing muscles. Couldn't use your ass muscles. So I had to breathe in as much as I could, really inflate those lungs. And this this is where I kind of got the the acting ca- the acting and drama came in handy because they always teach you Diaphragm. how to breathe properly filling up your lungs fully yep. um so i filled up my lungs and like a chip of toothpaste i just sort of pushed down with my <laughs> full capacity lungs <laughs> to squeeze things out rather than actually using my pooping oh muscles oh that's God. almost like a top tip um, that you've just given us all yeah, so if you if you if you're ever for whatever reason unable to use your normal pooping muscles, try and squeeze yourself out like a toothpaste tube. <laughs> um, I, this is the, a whole sentence. <laughs> yeah. So obviously, I wasn't feeling too great. The people at the office could tell that I wasn't <laughs> feeling too great because obviously this really took it out of me. <laughs> Uh, in trying to squeeze out my poop like a toothpaste tube, so like I, 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 it, I could only really do a little bit at a time, because mm-hmm. obviously then I wouldn't have enough in there to sort of push it out. So I had to sort of wait a little bit for the machine to fill up, and then anyway. Uh, so the people at my work noticed that I obviously wasn't doing too well. I felt dreadful, and apparently I looked not too too well either. So they sent me home. Um, this was when I still worked in an office with my auntie and my cousin. Um, oh. So I really could not tell them anything that was going on. Yeah. Um, but I, I did a lot of research online, uh, sort of looking into this sort of thing. And obviously because uh, bowel injuries are very common, um, I, I sort of came to the conclusion myself that I will keep an eye on it. I will check what comes out. And if it and doesn't, doesn't noticeably start changing within two weeks, I will go to the doctors. Smart. Because that's generally how long these things do take to heal. Uh-huh. So I, I, every every time I toothpasted myself uh, for the next <laughs> week or so, I would have to get up and turn around and double check that I wasn't squeezing out like a load of blood. Oh my uh, god, pal. Which is always you a good thing. You should have gone to the freaking no, hospital. I, 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 it, there, there was nothing that bad to begin with, though. Obviously, right. it, it was it was a, a, an uncomfortable set of circumstances, and although there was a very small amount of blood in my stool, it uh-huh. was a very small amount of blood in the, 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 the mucus that came out with the stool. Uh-huh. So it wasn't something higher up. I was like, yeah, that that's definitely just from the injury if You're there is right. anything yeah. if, if if that doesn't start clearing up within the first week then I'll go to the doctor and if the whole thing doesn't start clearing up within two weeks I'll go to the doctor yeah and it it, it was fine if if that anything had been a bit worse or if anything had lasted a little bit longer then I, I, I would have went to go and check it out yeah but I, I, I sort of did the, the, the thing which a lot of men do and just sort of it's slightly embarrassing. Down. I feel like I, I've got a handle on this for the time being anyway. Yeah, yeah which I, I do get. I, I also feel, like... feel that uh, women or vagina havers would be a lot... I, I specifically mm. say that yeah. not, not because I'm like, oh, genderness. It's specifically about vaginas um, are more likely yeah. to yeah. seek out help uh, relating to something to do with that purely because uh, in well, I, speaking for myself, in high school we got a lot of UTIs are serious, you could get a yeast infection you could get this, you could get that if this happens, yep. go to a doctor we were greatly encouraged to seek out help with that Yeah. yeah. Um, so 
I'll use that as a yeah. segue. If anything is wrong, <laughs> yeah. Go. If anything's wrong, go. That sounds quite good because I, I know obviously just sort of going on job titles there's obviously gynecologists which their whole job is to sort of take a look around and make sure everything's okay yeah. there are obviously proctologists which do the same thing round back mm-hmm. but it, it it's it's more of a service that you're referred to if you're having bum issues you have to get referred yeah, to you don't go there sort of, it's, you can't just seek out a gynecologist yeah. well you could if you're private i guess it's just yeah that's true yeah but it's sort of with proctologists is they generally tend to sort of look at that as oh we'll we'll take a look to see what's going on just because that's a, a good way in mm. whereas the whole yeah. with with gynecologists is there's a the whole system that they're there to look at which i feel is slightly more pointed towards the general overall health of that region whereas proctology is sort of oh you're feeling it's unwell m- let's see if it's to do with your ass yeah. yeah, it's it's like more reactive, whereas yeah. I mean, gynecologists kind of pose more of a proactive, proactive. approach. Yeah, as yeah. someone who, I, you, you two know this, but I have a lot of issues regarding my my balls and all that, uh, and uh, I have a condition. Uh-huh. There's a better name for it, but I can never pronounce it. But it's basically a redundant sigmoid colon. And before we were able to diagnose uh-huh. that, I had a lot of issues. So I was going to people about my butt, I was going to people about my uh, reproductive system, people about my vagina, all of that. Um, and I have to say, to me, when you're saying they're just kind of like having a look, I, I kind of disagree because when I was... Because oh. I've literally had procedures done. Um, I had a... Oh, what's it called? Camera up the ass. Colonoscopy, that's what it is. Uh, yes, yeah, so with that, I would say, from my personal experience, there's a lot more looked into that aspect of it when it, when they were looking at my reproductive systems. They, don't get me wrong, they did mm. have a look and they did like an ultrasound and everything, but I feel when it came to uh, the, the other end, there was a lot more there was a lot more physical tests done. I had to swallow a camera. Mm. I had a camera pill, which was the size of my thumb. Uh, and I had to have that go Ooh. through everything. Yeah, that was it was so difficult to try and swallow that one. Because uh, I'm bad at taking pills anyway. When I was trying to take that, uh, the nurse had to give me tips because they went, okay, just put it there and then just drink water and just swallow. So I did that. I was like, the pill's still there. I, I don't know what it is. Whenever I it's not whenever happening. I drink water and I'm trying to take pills, unless I'm actively trying to do it, the pill will stay in my mouth. The water will go, but the pill will stay. So I think I went through two and a half cups of water, um, just trying to get this thing down. Uh, and she had to like she like right just put it right to the back, relax, do do do, and don't put your neck back because if you do that, it actually closes up when you're trying to take oh. pills. So you just oh okay. Um, so yeah, I I would kind of disagree. I think it's just it depends how far through the system you need to go. Um yeah. Because I know that with mm. with UTIs, they don't always have to look. It can just be a case yeah. of diagnosing it and testing your pee. It doesn't have to be a whole mm. shebang. Like I do I do get what you mean. Doesn't yeah. you don't have to look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my horrific UTI story where I actually had to go to uh, the emergency room because UTIs can get caused by many, many things. One of them being... Milk and duct tape? No. No. no uh, yes, but no. No. Milk and, milk and duct tape. One of which being poor hygiene. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry, milk and duct tape. Just uh-huh. <laughs> killing me there. Yeah, it did me in too. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm just gonna kill you all with milk and duct tape. So, uh, yes, if anybody doesn't know, while the 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 ass and the vagina are close together, you should never mix the streams. Yep. And I feel like a absolutely a not. lot of people who have vaginas know this. That's why you have the whole thing of wipe front to back, not back to front, because that's how yep. you get really bad UTIs. Uh, now I yep. was with someone. Have been yeah, there. I was with someone who, whenever they got like a whiff of alcohol, would suddenly be like, 
I want to do butt stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. I'm not really one way or the other about it, but they were into it. So I was like, cool, I'll give yeah. it a shot. I'll, I'll facilitate that. And can't remember what it was. I know it wasn't their actual genitals they used, but uh, basically something went in my ass. And then when we're doing the do, I felt them take it out and put it in the, put it, put it in my vagina. And immediately my brain went, oh, for fuck sake, no. Like, cause I was like, oh great, I've got UTI now. Like there's no to it, I have a UTI now. So You're I'm fucked. fucked. Uh, so to be honest, I just enjoyed the rest of our sex. And then immediately, like, I was like, went to the bathroom, did all the cleaning stuff. Uh, the first thing I did uh, when the next day hit, because I already felt the pain, I was like, fuck. I went and got a load of cranberry juice. Uh, I told them, I was like, yeah. yeah I, I, abs- I, I, I told them, I was like, yo, you can't do that. I don't know why you didn't know that, but you can't do you that. Don't, you don't put poop into places where it hasn't already come out? Yeah, or? it's... Yeah. So, apparently that's not common knowledge, though. So... Here's some common knowledge, apparently. Uh, so yeah, it was really, really bad. Don't do this. Yeah, don't do that. It was really, really bad, the UTI I got. Uh, I was literally, by the end of the, that day, I was sat on the toilet, just constantly streaming out blood. There was bits of solid tissue in this piss. Like, it gotten so bad, there was like... Oh my God. Yeah, there was like cysts and stuff already within one day. Uh, this would This would have been... Maybe about 18 hours after sex. So it was one hell of a thing. Yeah. I was, uh, my partner at the time was there holding my hand while I was sobbing in pain. Uh, and I was on the phone to 111, the NHS 24, for anyone who doesn't know. And uh-huh. uh, they, they were telling me that I had to just go up to the emergency room because they were just like, it's just probably UTI, it's probably UTI. And they were telling me how to go. And I was like, I literally cannot stop pissing blood. I look. I cannot do that. I'm in so much pain. I cannot move. So I, I, I actually stopped drinking water and cranberry juice because, as I said, constantly, constantly pissing blood. If you, if you, if you stop drinking, then you uh, stop pissing. Exactly. And the, yeah, I just remember this woman on the phone being quite snarky with me. That she's like, actually, no, you'll need to keep drinking to get that out. And I was like, you can either have me pissing it out, or you can have me going to the emergency room. You can't have, can't have both. I wish I had enough sensibility at that time to turn around and say that to her. But I literally was in tears, sobbing. Um, but we eventually we got me up to the emergency room. Um, it was so bad because what originally they said to us was because this is during the 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 uh, the times of uh, not having li- the times that we're living. <laughs> yeah, the times of making sure we're all distanced. Um, they said, what you'll do is you'll get up to the hospital, you'll have to hit a buzzer. Uh, if your partner's with you, they'll have to wait outside, uh, but you can come in. Yeah. Now, we get out the taxi, and of course, I am in so much pain. I am literally doubled over in pain, and my partner's having to, like, carry uh-huh. me in. And, like, we get to the front door. There's already, like, <laughs> nurses <laughs> who've come out from reception to let us in. Because they just went, oh they're God. like, this is serious. And they let him actually come in and they said, okay, you can go sit over there. Uh, I got seen pretty much immediately. Uh-huh. I already had a little tup, Tupperware box with my piss in it to hand over. Uh, so I handed that over. And <laughs> of course, this was some kinky sex we're having because she had to do like a little check of my like uterus area. So she lifted up my shirt yeah. and just sees these giant scratch marks down my stomach. <laughs> <laughs> oh god did you have to tell her that yeah i just i i was completely straight up with everything that happened uh, did you have any body writing though? no i didn't i have had sex where That's i've been good. written on but not in this occasion well uh, yeah, I, I feel like that's that's that can be a fairly normal thing. But yeah. in that situation, especially if she went down and it's just like, daddy's cum dump. <laughs> and it's just like, ah, that's why it's like that. <laughs> well, mm. I had the scratch marks. And uh, to be honest, I didn't have to go into too much detail about how it happened. She seen the scratch marks went, are you okay with that? And I was like, oh, no, yeah, I'm fine. She went, gave me that coy look and went, do I want to know what happened? <laughs> She's just like, yeah. you little slag. Yeah, and I just went, oh. I just said, well, I just had a lot of fun last night. And she went, and now we're here. <laughs> I, was, 
I honestly I wish I remember her name because I that's the way you respond to that situation. It's like now we're here. Peak. Um Yeah. So she then told me that this is a horrific UTI you have, absolutely horrific. But it's just the beginning. This would have gotten twenty times worse if I'd waited till the next day to get a hold. Because I think it was on the Sunday and that's why I had to go through the NHS twenty four system. Yeah. Because if I'd waited till Monday, she was like, "No, you you would have been properly properly messed up if you'd waited." So yeah. yeah, if you feel like your UTI is really bad, go to the doctor immediately. Like, don't wait because it will get progressively Please. worse until you start treating it. And also, if if you don't know, if if you've put something in the butt, don't don't put it in the vagina. Simple as that. Okay, cool. I don't know how who told me this, but truffle butter is the name of of what happens when things go in the 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 the, the rear mm. entrance and then round to the the visitor's entrance uh. without a proper interchange in between. Mm-mm. Because what can occur after? You may have gotten a bit dirty using the the service entrance and then going round to the visitor entrance. <laughs> that combination of the two uh, local mm, fluids uh, yep. combines to make uh, something that resembles truffle uh, butter. No thanks. Thankfully, I didn't have that. Yeah, did not have that. I just got the germs. That you could tell. That no, no, I know for <laughs> a fact that I didn't. I know for a fact that I didn't. Thankfully, that's good. But all the bacteria was still there. Do not worry. I still oh yeah suffered yeah. great. Just because you couldn't see the truffle exactly. in the butter doesn't mean that it wasn't exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. Don't worry. I was in maximum pain. And I think I think I'm gonna do it again. And on that bombshell, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, was that in the Forbidden Third episode? You did that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And on that bombshell, thank you everybody who tuned in and listened. And we will hope we see you next week. And as always, we hope this was good for you. Bye. Goodbye.